Good evening, and welcome to another Friday Night Vespers, where we come together and have a devotional and worship our Lord. Today's uh, devotion is entitled, Serving the Master. I hope you all had a great week, and as you could tell, it's such a beautiful day, I decided to come and take this outside in my backyard. Uh, but before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this beautiful week. We want to thank you for all the blessings you bestow upon all of us and everything that you do to us and our family, Lord. We want to thank you for this upcoming Sabbath where we could just sit down and relax and, and be within you, Lord. Help us um, with anything that, that's in our way uh, that could take us apart from you. Lord, as we're ready to open up your word, be with all of us who are watching so we may understand. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon everyone who is watching uh, so we could see and understand what you are trying to tell all of us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, this week's lesson is entitled Serving the Master. And our memory text is found in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Colossians chapter 3, 23 and 24. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So our key thought is part of being transformed by Christ and growing in grace through the dwelling of the Holy Spirit means that we will become active members of society, attracting others to the Savior as we use our talents and gifts in service to the world. So what are you doing? During one summer, a pastor visited a woman who had a magnificent collection of rose bushes. She took him out into her yard to see them white roses, red roses, yellow roses, climbing roses. She had every species he had heard of and great many he had never heard of before. The woman began plucking roses right and left. Even when a bush had only one rose on it, she picked it. The pastor asked her, you are robbing yourself, dear lady. You are spoiling your rose bushes. But ah, she said, don't you know? that the way to make the rose bush flourish is to pluck its flowers freely. I lose nothing by what I give away. This is a universal law. We don't lose by giving. We increase our capacity to give. In our study of Christian growth, we will discuss the stewardship of our lives as God's children. We will examine, among other things, the purpose and results of such stewardship. When did Jesus tell his disciples the parable of the talents? And why? Well, let's find out in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And then let's jump down to Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So Christ on the Mount of Olives had spoken to his disciples of his second advent to the world. He had specified certain signs that were to show when his coming was near, and he had bidden his disciples watch and be ready. Then he showed what it means to watch for his coming. The time is to be spent not in idle waiting, but in diligent working. This lesson he taught in the parable of the talents. That's from Christ's Objects Lesson, page 325. Christ was telling his disciples that soon he would be going back to heaven. But while they were want, waiting for him to return, they were to continue their work on his behalf. 
So let's read the parable. It's found in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. We'll read the whole parable. Matthew chapter 25, 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. But likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Verse 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me you deliver to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. So the Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent into the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servants, you knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest so take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents for everyone who has more will be given and he who have abundance but for him who does not have even that he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what if God had made only one type of flower, one species of animal, one source of light? How interesting or practical would the world be if they were, if they were all the same? God values variety for its beauty, as well as for its usefulness. Some of us are architects. We know how to draw plans for the church. Some of us are skilled craftsmen. We turn the blueprints into wood and stone. Others come along to fill the finished structure with word and song. The janitor, the painter, the gardener who brings flowers and many with other talents, all the gifts of all the church members are needed. There is only one common element. God has given all of us at least one gift. One gift necessary to both the growth and maintenance of his church. The master's reaction to what each of his servants did with the talents assures us that God is indeed impartial. When the master returned, he did not condemn the man who had only two talents for still having fewer talents than the servants who started out with five. Instead, he congratulated him. He, con con he congratulated them both for being faithful. Notice also that the reward he gave each was the same. You can find that in Matthew 25, 21 and 23. Likewise, 
God does not view us merely in light of what we can do, but whether or not we do what we can. So let's take a closer look at the relationship with the servants that these servants had with their master. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, verse 20. Matthew chapter 25, verse 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. Let's jump down to verse 22. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. Now, let's read verse 24 and 25. Then he, he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and ga gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Our relationship with Jesus is the essence of our Christian service. We can be effective servants only as we trust him to number one, forgive us of our sins, and number two, empower us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to display his love and concern for other people. The servant with one talent did not view his master as a hard man because the master truly was such but because the servant did not truly know the master the servant was motivated not by the desire to serve well or to please his master but by his fear or failure such fear paralyzes us from doing our best indeed as we learn from the parable it prevents us from even trying Contrast the third servant's attitude with David's word in Psalms 119, verse 76 and 77. May your unfailing love be my comfort. According to your promise to your servant, let our compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. When the word lives in our hearts, service is on his behalf becomes a ple pleasure any fear of failure will evaporate along with the concerns for the number of talents god has given us i want to read something else from christ's object lessons it's found in page 360. however small your talent god has a place for it that one talent wisely used will accomplish its appointed work. By faithfulness in the little duties, we are to work on the plan of addition, and God will work for us on the plan of multiplication. These littles will become the most precious influences in his work. Let a living faith run like threads of gold through the performance of even the smallest duties, then all the daily work will promote Christian growth. The master, the servants, the talents. Christ, ourselves, and the abilities God has given each one of us that we are to choose, we are to use in service for him. The term talent first referred to as a unit of weight then to a unit of coinage. Modern use of this term is to indicate an ability or gift, and it stems from this parable. Influence is a responsibility from which we cannot free ourselves. Our words, our acts, our dress, our deportment, even the expression of the countenance has an influence upon the impression thus made their hang results for good or evil which no man can measure christ object lessons uh, page 339 and 340. 
So here's a question to ask yourselves. How can you put to better use the talents that God has given you? Whether we re recognize it or not, we are stewards supplied from God with talents and facilities and placed in this world to do a work appointed by Him. To every man is given his work, the work for which he, uh, to which his capabilities adapt him, the work which will result in greatest good to himself and to his fellow men and in the greatest honor of God. Thus, our business or calling is part of God's great plan. And as long as it is conducted in accordance with his will, he himself is responsible for the results. Thus, there is no place for anxious care. That's from Education, page 137 and 138. So the summary for this devotion is as Jesus' followers under his directions become faithful stewards of their gifts and talents, they will attract others to him. Thus, the church as a unit and members as individuals will, go, will grow stronger in the Christian graces. Amen. So, that's this week's devotion. Thank you all for watching. Uh, tomorrow, for uh, Sabbath services, I will be doing a, um, the sermon tomorrow. Uh, it is entitled, Arise and Go. So I hope to see you all um, there on either in person or in Facebook. But before before we leave, of course, let's have a word of prayer and we could close this uh, Vesper service. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this great devotion of our talents. Lord, we know that you have given each one of us at least one talent and we are to do what we can to bring those to know you, to, to love you, and just to, uh, to realize that, that you're around and they could see your grace. Lord, we want to thank you for that grace, for without it, we, we are nothing. Lord, we want to thank you for this Sabbath. We want to thank you for um, everything that you, you do for us, Lord. For any of those who are hurting uh, for any reason, Lord, be with them. With, for those of, uh, of us that might have something in our way, uh, any kind of doubt or, or any kind of temptation, Lord, help us realize to come to you before, before this temptation becomes a sin. Lord, be with all of us tonight and be with all of us tomorrow. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all again for watching. Have a great night.